International Politics, Chapter 1, From Conceptualization to Transformation into Global Politics. Dear students, welcome to the class of International Politics. In this session today, I will try to summarize the main points in your first chapter. And before I start, let's have a look at the lesson outcomes. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to understand the periodization of globalization, differentiate early phases of globalization through trade routes, empires and religions, comprehend dynamics of the modern Western world, grasp the historical characteristics of the European state system to have spread worldwide, clarify the United Nations system and the Cold War, and finally, you will be able to perceive global problems not easy to be handled on national scales. When discussing international politics, it is very difficult to do so without a total discussion about globalization. So, what is globalization? It can be defined as shrinking distances among the continents, a wider geographical sense of vulnerability, and the worldwide interconnectedness of important aspects of human life, including religion, migration, war, finance, trade, diseases, drugs, and music. So basically, it is possible to define globalization as interconnection among people, cultures, and economies. Globalization has been taking place for hundreds of years. When you look at the table, you can see that it's a process starting from primal age of history, but its dynamics, central nodes, and phases have changed from time to time and from place to place. Now let's have a look at the, these phases in a more detailed way. As you know, in early periods, human communities lived in stateless societies. As agricultural revolution became widespread, the need for stable residences, properties, and protection of these properties, such as keeping the harvest intact, emerged. And the idea of institution to design, protect, and manage this new lifestyle has shaped the state itself. An agricultural revolution triggered the formation of cities with improving technology of production, connection, transportation, and warfare. And that led city-states to evolve into empires with spreading trade routes, intercontinental trade routes, and here we can talk about Silk Road and Spice Road, are the most renowned ones, and they gave boost to cultural exchange. And thirdly, the antique empires, such as Macedonian, Persian, Rome, reached enormous capacity to spread across many different continents with their cultural influence as well. And finally, for this phase, we can talk about religions such as Christianity and Islam, which were adopted by masses. And, as you know, in 1492, with the expedition of Christopher Columbus to India, the age of discovery emerged. And the, this inclusion of the American continent into the European network has brought enrichment to empires, inspiring further expeditions. However, the arrival of European sailors on the African coast was also almost during the same period. And this oceanic breakthrough led a new network of relations among three continents, Europe, America, and Africa. And in the picture, you can see the transatlantic triangular trade. The age of discovery paved the way for a new production and trade type and created, a, as I said before, created a transatlantic world in which foreign trade and colonialism became main dynamics. And then a new social class, bourgeoisie, emerged and they increased their economic and political influence gradually and they succeeded to eliminate the secular power of the Catholic Church on politics, economy and society. Though it was the main figure of European politics, as you know, the Catholic Church was the main figure of European politics 
throughout the Middle Age. And apart from these economic and geopolitical transformation of the world, specifically Europe, we uh, also we should also talk about some mental philosophical transformation. And the Renaissance, roughly between uh, 14th and 17th centuries, was a period of humanism, art, music, and self-awareness. And uh, these concepts, um, these values, firstly arose in Florence, Italy, and then spread throughout the whole continent. And the Renaissance started the Age of Enlightenment in various countries of Europe, such as France, Scotland, Germany, and also in America. So the values like liberty, separation of church, and state tolerance, and scientific research also, became the characteristics of this new age. And the founding of the United States of America, and this can be referred as a milestone in this context. And with the developments of the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights, uh, the founding of United States was very important and uh, very important milestone. And the most influential effect of this overall transformation was the French Revolution, of course, in 1789. And this, we can say that this process of transformation reached its, its peak by French Revolution. And French Revolution triggered the formation of a new socio-political institution that survived for centuries as well as its current influences, the nation state. Rising liberalism and nationalism hand in hand have influenced Europe over time. The long serving monarchies were negatively affected and at the end, sec at the second half of the 19th century, Italy in 1870 and Germany in 1871 finalized their national unity following the United States of America in 1865. Hereafter, the cluster of unified nations consolidated until the World War I. So, how did nations consolidate? Firstly, uh, here we can talk about, as the causes, we can talk about the enrichment of Europe and technological improvements and these improvements and enrichment of Europe led to the Industrial Revolution. Secondly, the French Revolution created the citizen. And finally, Europe, having completed national unity and shared almost all colonial territories, faced with power struggle that couldn't be handled. And this, unfortunately, this led to some big world wars, World War I, and two. And negative outputs of two world wars taught the importance of interconnection and diplomacy among nations. United Nations as a unifying, easy connecting and negotiating platform among governments with their permanent representatives that help nations to deal with international contemporary issues. And another aspect of United Nations system was adaptation of new nations to the international order. By the end of 1960, there were very few nations waiting for independence and self-determination. So that was the period of decolonization and that meant sp spreading of Western global value sets again. And in, now let's look at the major events in the 21st century. 21st century has brought new issues which cannot be handled within national borders. Terrorism, climate change, 
environmental pollution, humanitarian crisis, immigration, and refugees are among such problems. All of them require a global approach to be solved with their transboundary characters. National initiatives are not sufficient. Therefore, concepts like global governance has emerged. United Nations here will serve as a more authorized mechanism for the solution of such problems in the future. Dear students, so far in this chapter, we have talked about globalization. We looked at the primary, primary phases of globalization, trade routes, empires, religions. We also talked about the expansion of Europe. And finally, we talked about the globalization in the Cold War period and thereafter. That's all for today. See you next chapter.